During this week of Thanksgiving, we had two babies born that are very close to our family. So my sister and one of my best friends both had their first babies just four days apart. I volunteered to be on cooking duty to prepare the first nourishing postpartum meals for these families. So today, come along with me as I cook these four dishes for two sets of new parents during the cozy holiday season. My sister had a beautiful baby girl the Saturday before Thanksgiving, so I started cooking for her and her husband. And for them, I decided to make a warm, comforting, and veggie-heavy ramen. It's one of my favorite recipes of all time. My husband and I have made it for years. And it does contain pork, which we got from our local farm. If you've followed along for a little while, you know that while I cook mostly plant-based, I do still incorporate animal products, and so do these new mamas that I'm cooking for. When it comes to red meat, like pork or elk, which is another thing we'll be cooking with a little later for the other mom, it's easy to overdo these things in most situations and to have some not so good health consequences. But in this case, we're talking about moms who just gave birth. And through that process, there's a lot of iron lost, as well as a much higher need for protein during the recovery period and as they start to breastfeed. So if there's ever a time to strategically add in some red meat, in my opinion, this is pretty close to the perfect situation to do so. Can you meet these needs with a 100% plant-based diet? Absolutely. But these moms do eat red meat and it's a pretty good source of iron and concentrated protein, so that's what I decided to use. But just as important as all of the whole plant foods we'll be adding to these meals, like this acorn squash, these are really important for reducing inflammation and adding fiber, which helps with recovery as well. So here I'm making a maple miso roasted acorn squash with curry powder, and this is going to be one of the toppings for the ramen, in addition to a little bit of the pork. And earlier we harvested some carrots from my garden, so I'm going to slice these up into thinner strips to use as a topping for the ramen. some shiitake mushrooms to the broth and then it was pretty much time to pack everything up so I have a big soup container that I put the broth into with the mushrooms the miso maple roasted acorn squash the crispy pork go into the next one and then a few soft boiled eggs for extra protein on top I wanted to make it as easy as possible so I tried to do as much as I could ahead of time and really just added in some ramen noodles that were uncooked. So all they have to do to assemble this meal is to boil the ramen noodles in some water and heat everything up in the microwave to their liking. My dear friend had her baby boy on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so by the time that she was ready to head home from the hospital, it was a day or two after Thanksgiving and there was a fresh blanket of snow on the ground this day. So I was really getting into the holiday spirit, doing a bit of decorating, playing Christmas music as I was able to cook her meals for her on a Saturday. I decided to cook some recipes from a cookbook called The First 40 Days by Hung Oh. And I'll link that in the description below if you're interested in looking into that cookbook. But it's a beautiful book that's got recipes, but also just beautiful writing with a lot of contributors all about transitioning to motherhood through the process of birth. When I gave birth eight months ago to my daughter, I really found a lot of value in reading this during my third trimester. It brought me a lot of peace, and I know it did to my friend as well, who really values the philosophy of the first 40 days, so I decided to use some of these recipes to cook for her. And if you're not familiar with the tradition of the first 40 days, there are different cultures around the world that practice sort of 
It's almost like a sequestering period where the new mother is expected to focus on her recovery and her health and the health of her baby and have others cook for her, help her with house chores, etc. And I find it to be a really beautiful way to support a new mom during that period where you have your new baby and it's such a short and special, precious period of time. So I'm going to be cooking two soups, the first of which is an elk sausage stew with lots of vegetables and potatoes. We're using elk here because my husband is a hunter and that's the red meat that we most often keep on hand and it's the healthiest meat that we could offer to this friend for this particular dish. But you could make this with any kind of sausage or a plant-based sausage replacement as well. I keep Parmesan rinds in the freezer to add to soups and stocks when I want to add a little boost of umami flavor, that savoriness that comes from cheese and meat. And this actually is a great tip for a plant-based soup. If you want to give it a little bit more umami and you're not strictly vegan or vegetarian, adding Parmesan rinds to the plant-based soup can actually give it that savory flavor without needing to rely overly on animal products or meat. While the elk stew simmered, I started on some brownies. My friend is gluten-free, so these are gluten-free almond butter brownies, and this recipe is from the first 40 days cookbook as well. But I love that it has so many healthy fats from the almond butter, which is really important for recovery as a postpartum mom. Getting in enough calories, which, you know, fats are very calorie dense, so a lot of those healthy fats are great for this period of time because we want enough calories to support recovery and support developing breast milk. If the mother is choosing to breastfeed, it's really important not to undershoot calories in this particular phase of life. And I love this recipe because it's sweetened only with maple syrup and dark chocolate. So I'm melting this dark chocolate to make it an even richer flavor. those brownies bake, I'm starting on the last recipe, which is an anti-inflammatory vegetable stew that has healthy fats from coconut milk and cashews, as well as a lot of different vegetables and spices that are anti-inflammatory. As you might imagine, the birth process just causes a ton of inflammation in the body, and one of our goals is to tamp down that inflammation using phytochemicals from all of these amazing plant foods. So these would include things like ginger, cinnamon, turmeric, cumin. All of these have been traditionally used to reduce inflammation and support postpartum recovery. So this soup will be great to keep around or to freeze for portions later just to give an extra boost when she feels like she needs it. that I love is an honor, whether that's just for me and my husband or for a big party or for new moms like this, or even just for myself. A nourishing meal is just a really powerful symbol of intention and connection to me. And I just loved delivering these home-cooked meals to these lovely new mamas. And I wanted to thank you for being here and for rooting for their journey as well. Both mamas and their babies are doing great at the time of this recording. So thanks again for being here and I'll see you in the next video.